What is the real secret to passing the professional engineering or PE exam? Is there a secret or is it just good preparation? Well, in this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam, I'm going to ask that question to a practicing engineer, Mason Mallard. Mason is a former professional baseball player, now a mechanical engineer who works for EMA Engineering in Texas and just turned 25 years old and recently passed the PE HVAC exam in January. But before I do that, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge. But through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. All right, so now I'm excited to welcome on our guest to pass the PE exam for today, Mason Mallard. Mason, welcome to the show. Thanks, sir. Thanks for having me. So, Mason, welcome aboard here. You recently passed your professional engineering licensure exam. First of all, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Mason, before we dive into the exam and get some tips from you on your experience, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background? Because I think you're maybe coming at this a little differently than a lot of engineers have been with where you've been in the last few years. Sure. Thanks, Anthony. So uh, I graduated from Louisiana Tech University uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering in 2019 and also played um, college baseball throughout the time that I was getting that degree. So um, once uh, school ended, I had the option to continue playing um, professionally with baseball. So um, I played with the Tampa Bay Rays in their minor league organization and I was with them. Um, from the end of 2019 until June 2020. So um, with COVID, I was released and at that point decided to pursue uh, engineering full time and decided to pursue my licensure as a uh, professional engineer. That's great. And, and, and congratulations to you. I think a lot of people don't recognize the value of the PE license early on in their career like you did. And you really, you know, obviously made an effort to go about and, and took and, and passed the exam. And for those of you wondering, you know, how Mason was able to take the exam at such an early age before he had a lot of engineering experience, there are certain states in the United States, Texas being one of them, where you can take the exam prior to getting all that experience. And then you have to fulfill the experience requirement afterwards to actually secure your license. Is that accurate, Mason? Yeah, so the there's a risk and reward with that, right? So the risk is that the, the PE exam is experiential based and, and theoretical knowledge based. Um, so the risk of taking it early was to, to say, well, maybe I don't have enough experience yet. Um, but I just took that risk knowing that the theories were going to be kind of fresh on my mind from uh, college. And um, I was able, obviously, to to overcome that adversity in a way. Yeah, that's great. And you know, I'm a proponent of that. I mean, I think if you can take the exam, you know, kind of take it as early as you can. Like you said, there's some things fresh. I mean, yeah, maybe you don't have all the experience yet, but with the thing with the PE exam, in my opinion, is you could always take it again if you had to. And if you feel like you have the time and you have the dedication, you know, why not give it a shot? And so getting to that now, let's talk a little bit about the preparation process for the PE exam in terms of like just thinking back on the entire process and your approach to studying, you know, what are some of the key things that stick out for you at this point, if you look back on it, that helped to make you successful in that studying process? Yeah, I think like we mentioned earlier, my, my, um, my process to getting to studying was a bit different. So right. Plan A was to, you know, play throughout the minor league season and then take the test in October and study for the test while I was playing and take the test in October 2020. Um, but with the onset of everything changing, my date kind of moved around a little bit and I think that affected me in a negative way. So I definitely say to pick a date and stick to it, you know, um, even when, when things are kind of moving all around the place and if the test isn't offered um, just twice a year now, it's every, it's how, however often you can take it. So, um, I would definitely say to stick to that, but also I had um, 
the, the process for as far as the process goes, um, I, I was really thankful for Dan Malloy's um, HVAC full bundle uh, package prep course. Um, it was incredible. Um, he was able to kind of walk through the fundamentals um, to allow me to re really understand what, what I was walking into. And um, I really kind of worked through through his 16 week course in a rather like fast pace uh, just because I kind of started that in December and took the test in January and um, was able to, to just kind of go in there and perform. Wow. So you didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this exam and obviously you felt like, you know, having the a review course did provide you some really good structure and kept you focused on what to study and, you know, how to do it in a, in a relatively quick manner. No doubt. Uh, the, the, the biggest issue for me was because I thought I was studying in like September, October, and maybe even no, November, but it's just, it's like a cloud of information and I didn't know where to step. Like it was just so much stuff. And I didn't even know what the first, the, what the right first step was to, to even, or even have a plan of attack. So um, dance course really lines out just uh, a process for you to, to learn the fundamentals and to be able to um, implement practice problems and, and videos um, so that you have the, the fundamentals and um, the, the information down packed. That's great. And, and really, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Mason's in the mechanical world and we know that there's obviously um, PE exams for all the different disciplines and there are a lot of different courses out there. Um, and I think having a course in general is really good in terms of like, you know, like Mason said, you're looking at a million topics that could be on this exam. How do you start? How do you study for them all? How do you do it in an organized manner and make sure you hit all the milestones you want to hit before exam day? And courses can be really helpful for, for doing that. And, and so, you know, I would highly recommend that for, for a lot of reasons. Totally agree there. So Mason, talk a little bit about networking. Did you get together with maybe other students in the course or other licensed PEs and try to get tips or inspiration from them? Yeah, fortunately, I work at uh, EMA Engineering uh, headquarters in uh, Tyler, Texas, and we have about 150 employees. And I would say I think our number is up to 23 PEs uh, on our team. So I can kind of I was able to have, you know, two or three at my disposal, not at my disposal, but in a way that I could um, just use them for information. I felt like I was using them most of the time, but um, I remember uh, just the guy that sits next to me at work, Marty Antilli, he recently became a PE and um, he would walk me through the basics of psychometrics almost daily because I, I was just able to, to kind of glean on him for that. I'm really thankful um, as far as that goes. And we have guys who are older who are PEs at EMA here and they also were able to obviously not share information because it wasn't fresh on their mind, but just share, you know, test strategy um, study processes and even encouragement because that was huge just um, as as uh, as hard as the test is and as big as the study process is just having encouragement of saying having seen people around you that can do it and have done it um, and, and then encouraging you to, to 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 say that hey you can do this yeah and I think it's a point that's not to be taken lightly in you know getting that encouragement from mentors or others that have their engineering license because going through the PE exam prep process is just a big challenge. I mean, it's a big life experience. It requires a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of brain energy. And, you know, anytime you can surround yourself, I think with others that have already accomplished that, that have been through the process that can say, Hey, you can do it type of thing. It's very beneficial. And so I think let's not take that lightly. If you're out there and you have access to other PEs around you, talk to them. Even if they did it 10 years ago, there's, they can still help to tell you, you know, just keep going, push you a little bit. I know for me, one of the silly things that I did when I was studying was I wrote out my name and I put the letters PE after it and I taped it up to my monitor. And it was like a silly thing to do. But whenever I got tired, I was like staring at it in the face and saying, I got to get to that point. I got to get to that point. So you really need motivation in, in terms of tackling this exam, which is really important. Now, another thing that I want to ask you about Mason, and this is, I think you're the perfect person to ask this question. You know, you can study all you want and you can be in a very controlled atmosphere. You could time yourself. Then you get into the exam and it's a whole different situation. You're talking about pressure filled, you know, game day, if you will. And, you know, someone like you who, you know, played 
baseball professionally, you know this better than anyone. You know, when you're out there practicing, it's different than when you're out there playing the actual game. So in terms of the PE exam, how do you think one can prepare, you know, beyond all the mechanics of the problems and all those things for actually sitting in the exam? Yeah, that's something I definitely wanted to cover too, because when I was studying, like you just hear everybody study hard, study hard, just do more practice problems. But nobody talks about, you know, how you have to go in there and perform. Like it's eight hours and it's rigorous and you're tired and it's a question like you're just, I don't know. I felt like I was getting beat up. I felt that I left the test felt terrible. And I don't know if I should share that or not, or and that might be an encouragement. I don't know. But I just, I felt like I was constantly getting beat up um, from the test, but I, I trusted the process it was to get there. Right. So as an athlete, you trust in your practice and your processes and you just go perform in a game. Um, it's, it's not, you have, you have to be extremely prepared, but you have to be ready to expect the unexpected as well. Um, I know things from my tests that I felt like I had prepared for, for very well. I, I hadn't seen before. Um, and I still had to be able to look at it, analyze it, um, and, and give my best engineering analysis from that point. So studying a lot is, um, is an expectation. It's important, but also to being able to perform on the spot and just expecting things to, to not go your way and to, to just kind of battle adversity the whole time. And I think that baseball in a cheesy way helped me prepare for that during the test. Sure. Yeah. I, I would believe that. And, you know, one of the things too, that I would say to that point is, you know, when you get into a situation like that, my recommendation always is for those of you studying is work as hard as you can to try to time yourself as much as possible and put yourself in a room, put yourself in a situation where it's as much as possible, like the exam center, because if you're sitting there just doing problems after problems and you're not timing yourself, you're really not setting yourself up for success because you're not going to have that luxury in the exam. And, you know, listen, I know that your kitchen table can't completely, you know, replicate one of the testing centers, but having that pressure, having that timing, it can be beneficial in some ways when you show up to the exam and you, then all of a sudden you're on the clock. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, hitting off a tee, right? If you want to be good in a game, um, you need to see somebody throw at you to, to be good. Uh, and, and likewise in basketball, you're going to, you might be really good, you know, shooting three pointers with nobody guarding you, but you have to have some pressure and some real game like, um, atmospheres to perform well, um, for a test or an exam or a game. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and hopefully, you know, you can replicate that in your study habits as much as possible. We know it's not perfect, but you certainly can do something. Now, Mason, for those out there that are in a situation like you, maybe where they live in one of the states where you can take the exam earlier than you have the experience, what does the process look like now that you've passed the exam and what are the next steps so that you can try to actually secure the license? Yeah, for me, it's um, just continuing to build on the engineering experience that I have. Um, being intentional about, you know, what I'm working on and, and documenting that process. I think early on, um, when I got this job, I didn't know that the things that I was working on, um, that I needed to document. So I had to go back and, and really think about the engineering decisions that were made and, and just, um, some of the processes that I went through as far as uh, designing a school goes or something uh, that we may have worked on as a team. So, um, at this point, I think it's about a year and a half. Uh, for me to just um, fill out my application, be able to 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 give that good engineering experience. I think it's four years of experience that you have to have and um, continue to work uh, on that until um, the next year and a half comes. Yeah. So again, Mason's point is really important there is that even if you pass the exam in one of these states, you, you're still going to have to really document that experience, you know, it's not just, you know, I know in, in most states where you need to get the experience first, you obviously document that experience on your application to sit for the PE. But in this scenario, obviously Mason was approved to sit. He was able to pass the exam. Now he's got to do that documentation. And I believe Mason also, you need to be able to have licensed professionals that you're either working with or for that can uh, kind of certify that experience, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my, my boss is a PE. There's, I have guys who are around me here are PEs and who can 
kind of vouch for you. It's just kind of accountability thing. I think the NC uh, EES wants to see um, other professional engineers um, stamping, obviously, your application, but also to vouching that you did do this work, and that is done with integrity. Great. All right, Mason, before we let you go here, any last kind of parting tips or advice that you'd give to the you know, the engineers out there, they're studying for this exam right now. They're getting ready to take it. Just maybe a last piece of advice. Yeah, for the HVAC guys, go get Dan Malloy's uh, course. He's awesome. I really appreciate him and his work that he puts into his videos. He's a he's a great guy and uh, just like a mentor from afar. It was kind of weird, uh, but it was cool. Uh, but also be solid on the fundamentals. Whatever tests that you have, um, be sure that you fully really do get a good grasp on the fundamental on the fundamentals of a test. And uh, lastly, just going to be being able to perform, uh, putting yourself in test like situations and um, treating it like a game and um, going out there and getting the job done. Awesome. Well, Mason Mallard, congratulations on passing that exam. We wish you the best in you know, continuing the journey towards your license and your career. And thank you for spending some time on past the PE exam. Awesome, Anthony. I appreciate you. I hope you found this week's video helpful. One key takeaway you must be able to perform on test day. In upcoming videos, I will solve more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please ask questions in the comments below, and I will read and respond to them. And let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.